Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from Kingdom Martin Cross Nation. And in case you're watching this video because of the thumbnail or title, uh, no, it's not a lie. There is a very strong possibility that you can manipulate your trait rolls and even a few of the other RNG factors within the game. Now, personally, I've been meaning to make this video for like the past month or two, ever since I first uh found out about it although there were a few reasons as well as to why i've kind of held off about it as like two in case you're a regular viewer of my channel you you should know by now that i i don't really like to how should i say um give confirmation about things unless i've like tested it out myself or someone has posted out like actually like scientific type of like findings and, and posted their findings and like results and stuff uh, online in order to give it credibility. And this ended up being one of those type of things where even though the source uh, claims to have made some things because it wasn't like posted in a scientific type of manner or anything like that, uh, or it didn't exactly give me enough numbers for me to be like, like 100% confident in it. I wanted to spend some time to test it out myself first before I actually made a video about it, as well as at the same time, uh, I also had just a bunch of things stacked up in the background, um, like a bunch of videos and stuff with my website and stuff that kind of pushed me back in terms of making this video. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it and discuss how exactly you can go about manipulating your trait rules. Now, the method I'm about to talk about with you guys was first presented by the YouTuber Spinebreaker. I'll be showing his YouTube channel on the screen and was originally talked about in his video, Can You Manipulate Trait Rules in Your Favor? About a month ago, more or less. And essentially the TLDR of the video uh, which I, I highly recommend watching yourself is that is that he mentions that he and Lost Predictions did about 500 trait rolls each and they found out that if you roll your trait rolls during a even numbered time like on the actual time like a clock and stuff okay you have about a 60% chance of rolling a good trait roll which isn't the greatest number because, you know, that's still a 40% chance more or less of getting, you know, okay or bad trait rolls. But at the very least, it's a way to help improve your chances of getting better trait rolls, such as extra attack, minus 60 traits, uh, raid boss traits and such. It's just a good way to help manipulate it, okay? Now, like I mentioned before, just because of the fact that uh, they simply mentioned that they did 500 trait rolls uh, and they gave me a percentage, but didn't actually give me like specific numbers as to like how many of those 500 were good trait rolls, how many were bad trait rolls, you know, specifics like that, because I didn't get specifics and I'm kind of purely going based off their word, basically. Uh, I didn't want to make a video about this right away. Um, and I wanted to spend some time myself to see how well this actually ends up playing out. So for the past month or so, I've been testing out this theory uh, just to see if my trait rolls more or less have been, uh, or just my RNG in general, has gotten any better. Now, one of the things that were mentioned, I don't remember if it was a comment or if you did it in the video, was the fact that you can actually not only help influence your trait roll RNG, but you could actually uh, carry this over into the RNG for other factors of the game as well, such as ticket pulls, like golden tickets, silver tickets, bronze tickets, and such. Now to start off, let's quickly talk about the method in terms of the trait rolls, uh, which is, like I mentioned before, the fact that if you roll on an even numbered time, so like for example, if I tried rolling at exactly 12 o'clock a.m. or p.m., I have a better chance of getting a good trait roll, okay? Or if I tried rolling at 12.12 12 or 12.16 a.m. or p.m., it doesn't matter. You have a better chance of getting good trait rolls, okay? As long as it's an even number and not an odd number, such as like 12.15, you have a good chance of getting a good trait roll. Now, no one really mentioned it, okay? Maybe because of the fact they don't have experience in the, the subject or not. Uh, but I actually have some programming experience myself because uh, I was studying computer science, uh, ex like particularly programming while in college. But for those of you that don't know, don't have any coding background, 
Uh, when it comes to coding, in terms of RNG, it's actually like 100% impossible to simulate a 100% RNG type thing uh, within programs. Now, you can create ways to give the illusion of 100% like complete RNG, uh, randomness essentially. But as far as I remember, you can't exactly create a perfect 100% random uh, simulation. Um, and this is where algorithms and stuff come in handy. Although one main aspect, which is something that wasn't actually covered in Spine Breaker's video, is the fact that one of the main core things that uh, a lot of programmers actually use in their coding to as a core basis for RNG is actually the clock, okay, the world clock. And that alone, from my, my background knowledge of programming itself, uh, is what helped give this topic and video uh, validity towards the subject and why I can give Spinebreaker's video validity towards the subject and be like, yeah, I can believe that because of the fact that like, I, I know this about coding. If you wanna know more about it, I recommend looking up the term seeding uh, for RNG. <laughs> if you want to go into specifics, in order to like create a random number generator with encoding, you actually have to seed the random number generator. And to explain this in like casual terms, it's like the program it's asking you is like, okay, uh, we're going to make a random number generator, but what should the random number generator be based on? Basically, that's what seeding is kind of asking, is saying. And a lot of programs, it is very common where a lot of programs will base the RNG generator off of the world clock. So that's why this claim is more or less believable to me. So one thing I've been doing for about the past month or so to see if uh, the time actually affects my trade rolls or not, or at the very least if I saw an increase uh, in my better trade rolls, I should say. What I've been doing is I just simply went to Google, I typed in world clock, I click on uh, this one right here, the timeanddate.com, and I picked my region all right, and all I do, and like, so so for me, I'm looking at the New York section over here, and all I do is I wait until it hasn't even numbered. Now, because of the fact that the, I know the random C generator, it literally goes off the specific time. It doesn't show it on here on the website, but it will even base it off the milliseconds of the time as well. Instead of just waiting for the minute number to become even, I will actually personally wait until both the minute and seconds are an even number uh, before I do my rolls. Uh, and what I've kind of found is at least from my experience so far is that yeah i've been having quite a good significant number of better trade rolls uh and even ticket pulls okay now a major reason why this type of method will work on trade rolls and even ticket pulls such as like silver tickets and golden tickets is primarily because of the fact that the pull of objects that you could potentially roll for are so small compared to something like banner pulls there's like over 500 medals in the game so the chances of you trying to use this method on something like a banner to try and get a specific medal is just so minuscule uh, that you might as well not even try to attempt it to be honest now, personally for me, I wanted to try getting even deeper into this theory and try and see if there are specific times throughout the day that can give you very specific uh, trait rolls in and of themselves. So that way I could be like, oh, I want extra attack on this metal. I gotta wait till, I don't know, 4, 16 a.m. in the morning at 14 seconds. Uh, in order to get that specific trade roll. I wanted to do something like that, but because of the fact that there are 10,800 different combinations of even numbers alone, and to make validity on that, like each of those tests, I would have to do at least like, you know, 100 to 200 tests for each specific <laughs> combination as well, uh, which is already like, over a hundred thousand different times I would have to test that and I'm just not willing to spend my time to go about testing that that would take way too long that would literally take me like months to research and stuff and I'm just not willing to take the time to do that so if any of you guys <laughs> want to go ahead and try testing it out by all means be my guest and go ahead and test out those very specific minute seconds like minutes and hours and stuff to see if you can get certain trait rolls and stuff like that. 
um, but I, I'm not willing to do that. <laughs> By the very least, I can add to the evidence uh, and testimony that rolling at an even time does seem to help guarantee better trait rolls. Just keep in mind, it is still not 100% guaranteed that you'll get good trait rolls every single time you do this. It just helps increase your chances. Uh, and once again, big shout out to Spinebreaker for posting the video and also giving me permission uh, to talk about his video in this video. But other than that, if you enjoyed the episode, please do a like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. By all means, let me know what your thoughts are about this subject in the comment section down below. But other than that, my name is Brian from Kingdom Martini Cross Nation, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Peace. Mm -hmm.